Hello, Hello. everybody. Uh, welcome to our St. Paddy's Day. It's the donuts. Um, we're just. Oh, you can't throw me under the bus. You can't throw me under the bus that early, huh? Yeah, of course. Oh, oh wow, wow. Okay, this okay, is the way it's well, going. Maybe right? maybe fine, 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 fine. <laughs> you're throwing me there. <laughs> Oh, you're really good Solid yeah. start. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys for um, all um, taking part in this. So hopefully you've all got your, your packs and kind of whiskeys and, and stuff poured. So um, just looking at numbers there, it looks like most people are here. So um, a lot of names we recognize, which is great. Um, but, welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. <laughs> and um, for those who are new to Whiskey and Donuts, um, we'll just, I guess, we'll introduce ourselves before we before we get going. So um, my name is Matt. Um, I'm the owner here at the Malt Room in Inverness, so a little whiskey bar based in the Highlands. Um, I know we're now kind of speaking to people across the UK, so I think maybe not everyone has been. Um, I know a lot of you guys have and supported the bar. So um, we've been doing sort of whiskey and donuts kind of through lockdown and um, got a really good following. We just love doing it. It's kind of highlight of our month, really. So, um, yeah, welcome to Whiskey and Donuts. Yeah. I'm, I'm Nicole. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah, great. I'm really immersed in what you were saying. <laughs> but I'm in um, yeah, I'm Nicole and I've got Perk Donuts, which is just next door to um, here at the Malt Room. And um, yeah, those little five miniature donuts in front of you are made by us. And we um, were open about two and a half years now. And yeah, like many of the folks here have been in. And um, yeah, so this is a really good chance for us to bring the two loves together. I used to work yeah. for, for Matt here in the malt room. Um, so bringing whiskey and donuts together in one. Yeah. And yeah, it gives us a chance to taste some new flavors and taste some new whiskey. Yeah. And yeah. I think the idea actually originally came from um, a couple of friends of ours um, who have a, a great Instagram account called Whiskey and Donuts, donuts Johnny yeah. and Erica. And um, they're based in the States. And we- so ended, check that out. Yeah, good. really good. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of basically have stolen the idea from them effectively. <laughs> um, just with so, their permission. With their permission, yeah. yeah they basically um, invited us along one, um, couple, two years ago now, to the Spirit of Space Edge Festival where they were hosting Whiskey and Donuts. You made the donuts and I kind of just tagged along because it sounded good. And uh, yeah, and we've kind of just, can, you know, just so happens to be you have a donut shop, I've got a whiskey bar, we're next to each other and uh, this is something we can all do at home and hopefully just have a bit of fun. Um, whiskey tasting can be quite serious sometimes, so the idea with this is just to have some fun, discover some new drams that you might not normally order and, yeah, have some of your, your delicious donuts. So, um, probably talk about the lineup before we go. So, um, we'll just kind of talk you through it. So, um, we've got them kind of set up one to five. So, if you guys have done the same, that'd be great. Um, with whiskey number one, you want um, the donut with the little hat on it. No, this is always the worst part of it. <laughs> so whiskey number two, you bought the one with the little lemon um, on top. Number three is the sugar coated one. Number four is the white icing with the little squiggles. And <laughs> the last one is the one with the Ireland flag. So the reason I'm describing them like a child is because Nicole you will. You are one. I am one, yes. <laughs> and that Nicole will talk you through them as we go. So I don't want to spoil anything. Um, so we've actually got a live stream um, down the right hand side here as well so um, we can see, you we can see we your comments coming in <laughs> from Facebook so um, it's always good fun for us um, to see what you think of the pairings um, if you hate them let us know if you love them let us know yeah. um, we recommend trying a little bit of the whiskey with the pairing we suggest but don't feel you need to finish that whole whiskey um, it's always good fun to mix and match um, yeah, some, mix. Of the, some of the pairings we've kind of gone for exact matches or things that we think will really work sometimes it's nice to totally contrast and pick something a bit out there so yeah, yeah. um yeah you can hate it or love it no offense either way just uh yeah write in the comments let us know if you have any questions give us a shout as well we'll try and see as much as we can yeah. i don't have my glasses so you're gonna have to i can much. just about read it it's kind of far away to see i can lean in forward Cat blocks. yeah um just to check the one with the yellow circle is the lemon, lemon. one yes yes yeah that's right so um hat lemon sugar icing sugar with squiggles then ireland flag um that's one to five um cool i think we're pretty much good to go cheers. yeah cheers don't yeah. judge my beer of choice for today i know st paddy's day there's, <laughs> there's only one beer of choice today or stout well i can't so. really oh i can't, I can't. <laughs> This is a really professional start, as always. <laughs> Joe, we've had more time tonight, which I think has, has made mm. us more floundery than you usual. No, we normally try and meet at six mm. and get set up. And I think you came about 
25 to 7 today, which is probably the earliest you've ever been. Oh, definitely, um, definitely. That's oh, actually lots of time. I know, so we actually had time to have a, have a beer, and it's probably made us a bit more nervous. Normally, we get thrown <laughs> in. Um, cool. So let's get started. Let's get started. So actually, this has been quite a challenge for me, actually, because I don't know that much about Irish whiskey compared to... Oh, we haven't even said Happy St. Paddy's Day. Happy St. Paddy's Day, yeah. Oh, I've well, got a present for you. Oh, I don't. Oh, you're going to throw me under the bus. What is it? Close your eyes. No, no, I'm gone. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what this is. Keep your eyes closed. <laughs> oh, wow. Your head's so big. Do you know, I do need a haircut. So, I'll, do you know what? I'll take it. Do you know what that actually I will, you? Like... Uh, do you know, it makes me think of... Um, is this a Six <laughs> Nations hat? I Maybe. I'm not sure. I stole them out. Uh, I think it is. I think the Guinness guys go around the pubs and hand these out. Um, Six Nations, and I was watching the rugby at the weekend. I actually got a ripping from one of the guys watching. Uh, <laughs> had my rugby top on. He's from Northern Ireland, and so I'm delighted you're wearing that top. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we got hammered. Well, didn't get hammered, but classic Scotland looked good and lost. Um, yeah, anyway, yeah. I'm rambling on. Let's drink some whiskey. <laughs> right. So um, first whiskey, whiskey number one um, is. I thought we better start with some Irish whiskey. Um, so this is it here. So I will just hold that there for a moment. It's always the other way around, isn't it? Um, so this is Green Spot um, by Mitchell and Sons. Um, so a couple of reasons I chose this. Um, I've never even heard of this. Yeah, to be honest, it's as I say, it's been quite a learning curve for me looking at Irish whiskey. I had come across these guys before. Um, they are quite quite a famous. Um, I can't take myself seriously looking at that. Um, <laughs> Famous distillery. Um, so the story of these guys is that they started, I've got some notes here, um, a bakery in 1805. So I thought it was quite fitting mm. to choose this for this event. So 1805, they started a bakery um, in Dublin. And in 1887, um, they started trading in wine. So they had they have cellars underneath the streets in Dublin. And having wine in, in under the streets is called having wine in bond. So um, you've not paid tax on it yet. So... What happened is that they had lots of kind of wine casks kicking about and they were wine dealers and they thought, what should we do with these casks? So they then started buying spirit directly from Jameson and mm. filling that spirit into wine casks. So um, they were the only guys at the time sort of, sort of doing that. Um, and it, it totally makes sense. You know, whiskey distilleries are always looking for port cask, sherry casks. And if you're a wine dealer or a wine merchant and you have these casks, you know, fill them with, with new mixed spirit and, and see what you can get. So the range is they have a blue at seven year old, traditional greens 10, a yellow spot is 12, and then they have a red spot at 15 years old. Um, so this one is? This is green spot. So this has been the most popular. Um, this has never been discontinued. So um, the others have been discontinued, brought up again. Um, and the, the kind of name uh, refers to um, the Mitchells who would go around and mark the cask with a big spot. Mm. So in distilleries now, you maybe see Arden Merkin or Harris or whatever, like kind of spray painted on. Um, they would just go around and mark the casks. Um, they had a code and it was kind of blue, green, yellow or red. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, it's not kind of quite like that. It's all sort of produced at Middleton now. Um, and the previous 10 year old green spot um, this is now a non-age statement. Um, so there's whiskey of about seven to 10 years in here. So this is pot still whiskey, which is your classic Irish style, triple distilled, which we will get into. Um, I don't want to do an information dump straight away. I think it's important <laughs> to, to drink some whiskey. I'm looking at the time, I've rambled on for 10 minutes already. So <laughs> let's have some whiskey and donuts. We'll we can go back into the more geeky terms uh, in a minute. Cool. Uh, and the, um, the donut we've gone with tonight for this one um, is a vanilla custard. So Kind of a favourite of mine, love a vanilla custard. Mm -hmm. It should be quite nice, especially with this relatively young whiskey, I think. Yeah, um, seven to ten years old, um, really light and really delicate. So um, the main differences between sort of Scotch whiskey um, and Irish whiskey with a E-Y. So, um, I'm going in while you're chatting. Sorry, you? yeah. Um, the, the spelling thing is just a lost in translation thing. Um, and the Scots called it without E and, and the Irish put EY. As whiskey grew around the world, um, there was a lot of Irish immigrants who went to the States. They took whiskey sort of over, um, and that's why the Americans call it EY. The rest of the world tend to follow Scotland's lead um, and spell it without the E. Um, but yeah, th that's the spelling is one thing, but the main difference is distillation um, and grains. So 
when I say on the bottle here, it says pot still Irish whiskey. So you'll see that just underneath green spot, it says pot still. Um, so just like the kind of Scotch whiskey industry, they use copper pot stills, um, but the grains they use are slightly different. So single malt whiskey uses 100% malted barley, um, whereas the Irish use malted and unmalted barley. Mm. Um, so that's the first kind of difference. Um, one of the reasons for that was there was a, a malt tax in Ireland. Um, so it cost more to malt your barley. So we used unmalted barley. Why is there a malt tax? I don't know. I'm not mm. sure. Um, but it, it doesn't exist anymore. Mm. Um, but the tradition of using unmalted barley still exists. Um, the other main difference is the triple distill. So what basically a, a, a pot still is like a giant kettle. And as you run the first run through, you'll get something out at the bottom called low wines, which is about 8%. And that kind of takes out some of the harmful um, parts of the spirit. Your sort of ethanols and methanols, you kind of, they're harmful for humans. Um, you don't want to be consuming them. So the second distillate then ramps that up and strips most, most of the bad, well, all the bad stuff out. And that's where kind of Scotch whiskey stops. Um, it quite likes the heavier mouthfeel, whereas Irish, just, Irish whiskey tend to triple the still, so you're basically putting it through that again, stripping out more bad parts and making a lighter, fruitier sort of style. So people think Irish whiskey is light, fruity, delicate, compared to Scotch, which tends to be heavier. So mm. that is your five-minute brief on the differences between <laughs> Scottish and Irish whiskey. I'm going to lighten up now and enjoy the donut and this, but it is quite an important difference, and I think mm. it is worth going through what makes them different but to me that whiskey i don't know I, it feels quite young to me like it's quite yeah. spicy hmm you know um, it reminds me of glen and ah. um, i just i get that whole vanilla apples pears delicate fruit citrus mm -hmm. mm. no not eating the, eating the donut really um, let's see great Enjoy start lovely donut. fantastic donut <laughs> breakfast whiskey yeah totally yeah at least someone get a screenshot of Matt sitting like oh, that with that. Don't. That's so good. <laughs> well, it reminds me of being in the pub, so I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. I know this is the closest as we're getting yeah. to, to being a pub at the moment. Mm. So this is vanilla custard? Uh, yes. Yeah, vanilla custard. And just a wee plain uh, glaze on the top with, of course, a wee uh, a hat to mm. the occasion. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Do you know, I really didn't plan the two things, but this came in and I thought, well, this, <laughs> this is actually perfect. Yeah, so, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah I'll take it. Top of that. It covers up my terrible hair. I'm desperate for a haircut. So, I was going to yeah. say, the beard's growing, the hair's growing. Yeah. I look, like I Hagrid look... the next time we're here. <laughs> <laughs> if I keep eating these, I will look like Hagrid, I tell you. Hmm. I can't read that. You're going to have to do the reading for me. Should I pull it a bit closer? Yes. Because okay. we're all in room is squinting oh, like mad at the screen. <laughs> we're just trying to keep in touch with your technical problems. With your comment. <laughs> Fiona, just lost half my custard. I feel, <laughs> I feel you, Fiona. <laughs> happens happened to me as well. Mm. Mm. Good though? Yeah, I'm gonna try it with the dram. Mm. Um I added a little bit of water to my dram just to mm. take I don't know, maybe it's because it's the first whiskey, you know, sometimes getting in, maybe coming back yeah. around it'll um so alcohol wise, you're looking at um, Green Spot is 40%. Mm. Um, they produce about 12,000 bottles a year. Um, not super expensive. Like, I mean, for seven to 10 year old whiskey, you're looking about, I think it's about 40 pounds, 35 to 40 pounds retail. Um, I really like it. I can see why people have continued to support Green Spot. I think just a personal thing, like if you're triple distilling something, it's going to be quite light and delicate. If you super age that, you're just going to get more cask influence. You know, that is probably the the perfect balance for mm. triple distilled spirit. Um, nice. Yeah, I'm a fan. I like it. Oh, I do. I quite like it. No. Not, my not your favourite? Mm. I don't know. I'm not I'm not one over quite yet on this one. Mm. But. So, another just quick Irish whiskey fact. It's on one tonight. Guys. I know. I did my homework. Bear with us. No, I've done my homework. <laughs> so, um, single pot still, so single malt whiskey means single means one distillery, so mm -hmm. that carries across. Single malt in Scotland, 100% malted barley. Single pot means malted and unmalted barley. But single pot 
still yeah. whiskey is basically like some sort of legal term for it but that's actually quite new so it used to be called pure pot still um oh. so not too long ago um and the reason it changed from pure pot still to single pot still was to the americans so the american tax bureau have an issue with any food or drink item having the word pure in it why don't know didn't click the link um <laughs> <laughs> i was getting a bit lost and i thought i'm writing a lot about whiskey number one people will be bored um so i thought i will not go any further but <laughs> if you want to look into it there you go so it used to be called pure pot still now called single pot still um so yeah that's i think that's probably enough on that one I oh, think. yeah yeah definitely oh, i'm excited to keep, mm. keep trying okay so um let's see so good winner is so good love the classic flavors yeah i think that is a good pairing i think yeah, vanilla yeah. light delicate whiskey works yeah it's a good combo okay so time for whiskey number two um really interesting stuff this um so we are you might oh, almost knock that over um you might have seen this on our wee instagram story this is a wee sort of sneak peek of what was to come um lovely bottle design looks like that's kind of on your head there <laughs> <laughs> no, just on my head. um so this is waterford um if you're a whiskey fan or a collector you've probably come across this um quite recently um so waterford was set nice up bottle. lovely bottle yeah lovely yeah. bottle so waterford is quite an interesting distillery um set up in the south of ireland um by a guy called mark rainier so mark rainier is the ex um master distiller at brew Clady. so he mm. kind of restored brew Clady in 2000 he is the one responsible for um octomore series so if you like your smoky whiskey you see Octomore 1.1, mm -hmm. 2.1, 8.9. And kind of his whole thing is he was an, an ex-wine uh, merchant, I think, as well. And he's all about terroir. So wine is very terroir-focused. And terroir in drinks terms basically means where the grapes are, the soil, where, where something basically comes from. Because the Scotch whiskey industry is so big now that, you know, a lot of the barley doesn't come from the field next to the distillery. Mm -hmm. It comes from, you know, massive maltings and stuff. So he's all about actually the barley is really important. So um, Waterford are basically, their view is barley is king. Whereas a lot of distilleries, you look at Macallan, for example, I, I don't know how I keep talking about Macallan, here we are again. It always comes back to Macallan. Um, Just wait, two minutes will be slain. <laughs> but they, they have invested so much in the casks that they have even bought a sherry house in Hered and basically cask is so important to them. Yeah. Whereas these guys, they believe barley is is the key. So um yeah, so the stills for Waterford, another interesting thing. So they were housed interleaving for a while. Um and then they Mark Rainier when he left Brewcladdy somehow managed to take them to Waterford. Um I believe they were actually set for um Port Charlotte. They're going to open Port Charlotte mm. as a distillery, not just as a as a brand off Brewer Claddy, and they were they were going to be used for that. But um, in the end, took them to Ireland. This is double distilled, so very much like the Scottish style. Um, it is four years old. They set up in two thousand and fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. Um, and it's all about the farm. So this is one point two She's Town. It's called. Um, and that is the name of the farm. So that's where the barley comes from. Mm. So four-year-old whiskey, 70 pounds a bottle. Wow. Very expensive. Um, so I've not tried much of it. It's pretty collectible stuff. Oh, um, my, I've just had a mouthful there. I really like that. You like it? I was going to say, that Good. trumps this first one for me okay. instantly. Okay, so they're all about, as I say, quality of spirit. If you look at their bottle here, they have, like, beautiful information and, like, codes and like i'll just show you guys here <laughs> i'm geeking out here but it's like discover the terroir they have all these codes and you can trace pretty much everything in this bottle back to the grain in the farm um one of the workers it's i think the the daughter's father owns this farm um so yeah and an amazing approach to whiskey um i would say it's more like a scottish approach yeah in ireland with a focus on barley 
is the best mm -hmm. way I can describe it. I've not tried this um, much, so yeah, looking forward to it. Mm. Cheers, sorry, I'm again geeking out, but sorry. That's all right, don't worry. Um, so I've gone with a lemon curd. So yeah. I wanted to go big on lemons, big up that zing with a wee lemon glaze there, and obviously a wee lemon twist as well, which you don't have to eat. Mm. Um, but that should come out quite nicely. It I should, think, both. yep. I really like that, to be honest. That can't believe that's four years old. Four like, years you old, can, yeah. you, you know, you can feel that it's young, but... 50% ABV. 50%. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. I like yep. it strong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is this is punchy, but I think I think we went for lemon with this one because we used a grain whiskey a while back, and light whiskey and lemon seems to be a good combo. Yeah. I remember it was my favourite, actually, and mm -hmm. I, I didn't think it would be. This one will be gushy, so be careful. <laughs> Before we get clarted mm. and lip lemon. Gushy, what a weird <laughs> word. Not <laughs> be gushy. Oh. Mm. <laughs> gonna... Yeah, so how can you get a good whiskey in four years is one of the questions. So mm. that's it. So I think some of the important things for me are I'm not a distiller in any way, but what I've tasted and and spoken to distillers. Fermentation time is important. So Waterford have mixed fermentation times from 100 to about 130 hours, which is considerably long. Short distillate, short fermentation is about 60 hours. A lot of flavors created in there and it just takes time. Um, quality of barley, I guess, is their, their thing. Um, I, I think I was always always kind of brought up in the idea that casks were very important, but mm. their view is that the spirit itself is is super important. So it's a distillery that's, yeah, it's kind of made waves. I mean, they're Excuse releasing me. quite a lot of stuff. You know, it feels very Brew Cladi esque in the, <coughs> bless you. Excuse me? <laughs> in the terms of the, the numbering system, you know, 1.1 cheese time is out, 1.2 is coming out. Very easy to track very collectible beautiful bottles i mean even the corks are like made of glass mm. um yeah but it ought to be at 70 pounds 70 quid <laughs> yeah i know I, I i think it's lovely in a in an environment like this where we can mm -hmm. share the cost of that and we all have a dram and yeah. we try it would i spend 70 pound on that probably not yeah um i think there's some pretty good contenders mm. out there that i think in a bar environment yep it's an interesting bottle it's an interesting point and you know, there's obviously not a lot of it if they're selecting the barley from specific places, but yeah, a, a good approach is, is very, very popular, very collectible. So people also agree that the liquid is good. So what are people saying to it? Best with the donut, really good pairing. Well done, Nicole. Thank you very Alan, much. Alan, the Waterford Terroir is mostly limestone here. Alan was telling me about it. So Alan is a, an Irish friend of ours. Oh, yeah. Um, he says he's Irish, but I asked him for some <laughs> Irish clothing today. He had none, so I'm, I'm starting to question it. Dreadful, um, Alan. Dreadful. Uh, Terroir is mostly limestone, perfect for growing barley. Um, it's also famed for its crystal crystal glass production. The bottles, a tip of the hat to this. Ah, cool. Mm. So this little thing, the, the cork is actually made of glass. Um, so one of our regulars, Alan, has said that they're famous for crystal. So that's that kind of... A little tip of the hat to that, so oh, yeah. That's actually a nice little story. Yeah. Nice, yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, nice combo, very fresh. Um, mm -hmm. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Cool. So should we move on to number three? Are you still, yeah. Yeah. Still enjoying I'm that just going to have one more swig yeah. of this. Cheers. Cheers. Good sound. Oh, I love that sound. Mm. It's nice, isn't it? Mm. This is always a nice part after we work. Mm, Quite yeah. Intensely for a few days. Get to sit and have a few drinks. Ah, totally, totally. Um, cool. So, two Irish whiskies done. Um, mm. I I did wonder, but the lineup was kind of bothering me for this tasting. I thought, do we do all Irish or do we throw in some Scottish stuff? What do we do? Um, and I thought, let's maybe throw in a couple of Scottish ones um, just to kind of taste the difference um, as well. So, um, we're going to do a couple of Scottish ones and then finish um, on an Irish one. So, um, we'll have some Guinness first. Have some Guinness. Yeah. I'll, I'll top that one here. These are going to well, down well tonight, though. I know. I actually looked at myself on the camera there and I looked like <laughs> I've just been at the Six Nations 
wandering in a pub. And now you're swaying about. Asking to about whiskey and you're just like, I know. Irish whiskey, Irish, Scottish whiskey is better. Let me tell you all about Scottish this metal. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, how to, how to get a like quick access to a pub. Let me tell you about fermentation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Right. Okay, so. It'll be lovely to go back to the rugby game. Oh, I know, I know. After all this is over. I know. Tickets for um, the World Cup go on sale tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, France 2023. So we actually, Scotland have Ireland in the group. Um, should be, a, if it's anything like last weekend, not good news. <laughs> um, so whiskey number three. Um, again, I thought I'd, I'd try something a bit different this week. I'd, I tried to stay away from kind of normal bottles. Um, so this is called Darkness, um, eight-year-old. Um, so... 47.8%. Um, so what this is, is the guys at um, Master of Malt or Maverick Drinks is their sort of trade name. have kind of started doing some indie bottles. Um, so they buy casks of whiskey um, from distilleries and they then bottle it under darkness. And sometimes they, they give it a name and other times they don't. So I think this is just called, I think this is called Space Side Eight-Year-Old. Um, and I wanted to throw this in the mix because I thought the first two whiskies were sort of seven to ten and then four. So I thought it's not really fair to throw in a 18-year-old scotch and then be like, oh, look how good this is. So mm -hmm. I think what we're trying to do here is show that age isn't everything. Um, this has won um, a couple of gold medals at awards for um, the Space Side Under 12 category. Mm. Um, at eight, and that's do doing pretty well. Um, Sorry, who did you say this is? So it's, it's effectively Master of Malt. Right. Um, the website, um, and they've got a, an arm of Master Malt called Maverick Drinks. Why are you laughing at this? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny the way you say Who makes this? The website. The website. <laughs> the make website. It. Make yeah. It. Yeah. it magically appears, and that's it. The website <laughs> numbers it out. Sorry. <laughs> so basically, what it is is um, a combination of bourbon and sherry cast, and then they finish it in what's called octaves. So what is an octave? You should know this from working here. Oh, I know. Right, wait, I do know. An octave is a small cask. Correct. Here we go. How many litres in an octave? Ooh, not many. Um, not many is correct. Can that be my final answer? Yeah, it's pretty good. I'll give you that. I will give you that. Yep. 50 litres, roughly, 50. in an octave. So um, what putting whiskey in an octave does is it basically speeds up maturation, kind of. Um, you're not speeding up time, but you're speeding up interaction with the wood. So if you think of the screen oh, as a cask and it was all full, you know, there's not much of that liquid actually interacting with the out, outer side of the screen. If you close that in, the wood to, li wood to liquid ratio will change and it will interact more. So kind of speeds up flavour maturation. Um, so eight years old um, from a space side distillery. I don't know where it is. Um, I would put a large amount of money on saying it is Glen Farkless, but mm. that was from an Irishman, not from me. Um, <laughs> Alan, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Glen Farkless, but they they don't put that on the bottle. Um, flavor profile is Glen Farkless. So yeah, cherried, nutty, kind of a bit richer than the first two, but of the same age bracket. So um, yeah. Sorry, go on. No worries. Uh, so the third donut here is a bit of a curveball, one I haven't really done before. Um, so it is a amaretto flavored liqueur. So um, it's not actually amaretto, de Saron amaretto, um, but it's very much in line with the flavors of am mm. amaretto. So um, that sort of nuttiness should hopefully come together with this um, whiskey. Haven't tried the whiskey though, so this could be one of those ones that people hate or love. I don't mm. know, but let us know. And I've just noticed that Pinky's here and she's saying hello. So hi to Pinky. She is one of my hmm. uh, old bakers who sadly we lost a while ago. Um, she's living in France now, loving life. So the way um, you said that, I hope she died. No, I know. She's not I, here I, saying I, hello. I the was, way that I... <laughs> we lost her. We lost but her. She's still on Facebook. <laughs> Someone's writing for her. That's creepy like, as um, No, she moved to France. I know. I so... remember Pinky. Hello, Pinky. <laughs> Yeah. I think he was a great baker. Oh, she's amazing. I'd say, you know, donuts, donuts have gone down a little bit since. Even. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, I... <laughs> what a cheek. <sighs> Come back, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That's nice. Mm -hmm. You know what you've forgotten tonight. I know, I noticed earlier I was looking for them, but I couldn't find any. Napkins. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh. <laughs> you, uh, you hop into the rugby or something. It does look like it, doesn't it? Uh, well, nice donut. Nice dram. I like that. It's funny how Irish you look in one photo and then how completely un Irish I look in the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you just split the screen. <laughs> what mm. are people saying? So that's the best so far. Mm. Uh, we love the website, Master Malt. Yeah, totally. Um, the donut is very smart. Did someone say amaretto? Yeah. Yes. Nice uh, nice combo. How, yeah, how do you think about them together? Great. Good. Yep, yep like that. Because like sherry, whenever we use sherry, I always try and convince you to do the old-fashioned donut because I think mm -hmm. it's amazing and I think people do love it, but it's good to try something different. Best pairing so far. Thank you, Duncan. Mm. <laughs> mm. I can't read that last one. What does it say? <laughs> the donut's the winner on this one. Yeah, you know, I think, well. I think the filled donuts always seem to be the favourite. Mm -hmm. um, Mm. Yeah. Well, I like that. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yep. Light, but it's mm. nutty, nuttiness works, you know. I'm just trying to think of more things to say about this dram, but there's not much more to say. Um, it's pretty affordable again. I think you're looking about the 40 ish pound mark. Mm. What's the Louis? 47 8, I think. Mm. 47.8. So, yeah, good, good bang for your buck. I like um, this. It's really good, actually. Yeah. I mean, eight year old whiskey. I think mm. the, the, the fun thing about these tastings is like sometimes I get that, you know, Put myself a little bit under pressure and think, oh, there needs to be a, an old whiskey in there, or mm -hmm. there needs to be this. But you know, if someone says, Oh, do you want to pay 70 pounds for a four year old whiskey? Mm -hmm. You'd kind of look at them and say, You're off your head. You're but nuts. actually, in this sort of setting where you get to try the different flavors, you actually learn quite a lot about how whiskey matures and develops. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's easy to just pick stuff you know is going to be amazing, but to learn and understand why stuff ages and tastes different is, is also good and and the flavors are working really well i think that's that's, that's really that, the lemon in number two is good mm. I, like, I feel like this is my favorite dram now mm, i think number one is still my i actually the green spot yeah. I, I really really liked yeah i just mm. thought it was really well rounded really easy to drink um i wouldn't i just yeah the price tag on number two just mm -hmm. scares me a bit mm -hmm. um well green spot was my least favorite so far there you go there you go hey what are people saying Best pairing so far. Donut the winner on this one. Very nice yeah. pairing. So Thank what, you guys. what the viewers are concluding already is that Scottish whiskey <laughs> is miles better than Irish whiskey. I mean, no. we had two, no, no, no. two We're opportunities. About the pairing, the pairing, not the pairing, necessarily the whiskey. Uh, yes, true. Let but, us know which whiskey is your favourite so far, please. But I think, you know, we had two £70 pound bottle of whiskey from Ireland and £40 pound bottle from Scotland. But it's not all about the price tag, is no, it? No, no, no. I mean, look how expensive I'm, the Macallan is. I am just... It's not your favourite, is no, it? No, no. I'm just listening <laughs> to the viewers. We run a democracy here <laughs> at Whiskey and Donuts and the viewers are correct. <laughs> You're getting a red face. You do look like an Irishman. Mm. Alan, can, can you confer? <laughs> I'm doing my best impression of Alan. I know. I yeah. still haven't heard your Irish accent yet. No, no, no. It's coming. It's coming. When? Time's mm. a ticking. Is that supposed to be yours? No, that wasn't me trying. <laughs> I'm not, I'm notoriously bad at accents, so I'm definitely not going to attempt that. Okay. But you do have to, because it makes a difference. Right. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the democracy we run here, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So, um, what are we saying? Faith Whiskey is mm. number one at this point. Duncan oh. Ireland, a man of good taste. Uh, Just number... because Ireland in the name uh, doesn't mean. Yeah. <laughs> number three so far, Mark Sweeney. Yeah, green spot for me. Yeah, thank you, Darkness Mark. Darkness is a better me. taste. So, yes. interestingly, the two forty-ish pound Blue bottles of. <laughs> I'm just choosing not to listen now. Yeah. Hasn't <laughs> changed there, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one in three favorite so far. Um, cool. I think two's great. But I just don't. Really, I just can't justify. Yeah. Um, okay, let's maybe move on to number four. Four, four, four. So this is going to be a really, um, this is going to be a really funny one actually because a lot of you will have come across this. You might not have opened them to drink them. You, who knows? But we'll we'll talk about it as we go. But um, we're going for Klein Leash. Not Klein wrongly Leash. again. Oh, I always keep doing this wrong. So this is Klein Leash. Game of Thrones whiskey. <laughs> um, so, where to Game of Thrones start whiskey. with oh. that? Um, okay. 
Did you watch Game of Thrones? I did. Loved it. I haven't. Um, Who are you? I work too hard. See, I, I work around the clock. I don't have time for TV programmes. Really? Yes. That's the real reason. Um, I'm not even just find that right response. <laughs> <laughs> so... How many um, holidays you going on this year? I haven't been on any this year. Because of the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks like I've just come back from Ireland, to be yeah. fair. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Game of Thrones release. Um, I think every man and his dog, whiskey fan or not, you probably either know heard about, about watched Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. heard about the whiskey, and it was a masterstroke from Diageo, to be mm-hmm. totally honest. Um, they had nine whiskeys, um, snibbly priced, probably a bit more expensive than you would pay for their core range in some of them um and people who loved the game of thrones suddenly thought you know I, i'm going to start collecting whiskey and you know get the full set you know it kind of that kind of pokemon card child mentality of if i get them all will be worth loads which unfortunately just isn't true in the whiskey world um whiskey collectors are very specific in what they like certain distilleries it's got to tick certain boxes and you know the first sets on auction, I think they were about three-ish, four hundred pounds a set. The first sets went for two thousand pounds. Um, people went crazy for it, and now I think you can pick them up for about two hundred. So people for the full set for the full set. Right. Yeah. Um, so the issue is that they're most of them are kind of core releases. Um, there are a few that are different. This is one that's different, which is why it's interesting. But most of them are just re packaged versions of like Cardew Gold, Mm -hmm. 25 pounds, Game of Thrones bottle, 40 pounds. So it's a shame. Um, What I'm basically saying, if you have bought them, feel free to drink them. They will not be worth more in years to come. There was tens of thousands of of them. Um, Nice thing for Diageo. It was great. Uh, You know, very clever move. Mm. I also think there's more to it though than just the financial side. I think it was an interesting way of getting whiskey into people's classes who maybe aren't whiskey fans yeah yeah fair. you know fair. like you watched a tv series this is your favorite house and you've maybe bought that whiskey at 40 50 pounds mm. great like open it enjoy it you know and that that that's really good too i think that is a, is a good move but to buy it purely for profit um is not what this is about um it just it just it's not gonna work um but so is this the non-age statement or non-age statement? Mm-hmm. So this is Kleinleash. So Kleinleash is a distillery I love. Um, that's Sorry, I've got a few comments going on. So here. I thought Kleinleash only sold out and said, "Yep." So Kleinleash did sell out. So Kleinleash was the lowest number um, of them all. I think um, it is the rarest of the nine, I believe. Um, and people did go mad because Amazon had X amount of the other ones. Kleinleash sold out, and people were paying. 200 pound plus for wow. a 40 50 pound bottle of Klein Leash. Um, so Klein Leash itself is up in Brora, it's a Highland distillery. Um, they're really famous for making an unusual spirit that's often described as waxy or has a, a, a really interesting mouthfeel. Um, as I say, they do a 14 year old and they do a couple of distillery exclusives, but nothing really apart from that. So to see a Klein Leash. That was set like this. yeah, and a set mm-hmm. like this that was actually fifty one point two percent kind of got my attention. I was like, "Great, I love Clean Leash. I love the spirit, mm-hmm. even at forty quid." I think now it's on offer in in like thirty two, thirty three pound a bottle for that level of strength of whiskey, and it's Clean Leash. Yeah. I was like, "Sign me up!" Like, mm-hmm. like it, how it can't? It's Clean Leash. It's going to be good, you know, mm-hmm. um, and it is good. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is good value for money, um, and it is good drinking whiskey, um, which is which is why I chose it. I thought there's still loads of it left now, so if you guys want to go buy a bottle, Klein Leash at that strength, at that mm. price, doesn't come around very often. Um, independent bottlers love it. There's old stuff that's really expensive, but yeah, as an actual spirit, it is Klein Leash. It's good strength. Yeah. I am quite passionate about it. Hate the series, love this brand, mm. is my conclusion. <laughs> so I'm assuming you've not bought any of the Game of Thrones uh, lineups then. Um, I bought some. I bought the Mortlich oh. because I like the Mortlich. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, I got it again on the sale. Um, I think the 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 whole bubble burst and then they found some stuff in the sale. And actually, Mortlich as a distillery is one I like, mm-hmm. and I and I bought it. But 
Um, it was at the higher end. It was almost 90-ish pounds a bottle, I think. But mm. in terms of value for money, stuff you guys can drink at home, pull out. Yeah, this is this is good for me. Yeah, I like that. It's good. Um, and so I've gone with a simple donut for this one. Um, it is a ginger spice glaze with a honey drizzle. So um, it was quite plain. Should have some good flavours in there. Um, yeah. What's your read? Klein leash. Oily with a hint of burnt oil skin. Yep, totally. Mm. That mouthfeel is so... Up the brora. <laughs> like spider alert. Spoiler. Spoiler oh, alert, spoiler. yep. God, I need my glasses. I probably sent to my brother-in-law in Taiwan about eight years ago. Yeah, hmm. note. Yep. It's, um, it does have a mouthfeel like any other whiskey. Um, Klein Leash has got a lovely finish. Normally you'd put that maybe bef- like earlier on, but the strength of it, I think... The earlier whiskies were, were very light and delicate. This has a really gripping mouthfeel. Mm. Um, talk me through the donut. Yeah, well, just I thought about the ginger because ginger really holds its own as a flavour. It can be quite fiery. Yep. And I thought that sort of waxiness might cut through a little bit. Mm. So it should hopefully, there's nothing filled in this one. It's just a glaze, but it should hopefully have quite a strong mm. enough glaze that it'll then cut through that um, the waxiness of a kind of leash. I also love kind of leash. It's one of my, mm. it's up there, you know? Yeah. Um, we had a a bottle. I don't think you remember. I think you were. It was like a. I think it was a 1993 whiskey exchange, 20th anniversary bottle. The signatory bottle, so a really big fancy mm-hmm. bottle. And um, yeah, it was. It still is probably one of my favourite drams ever. And Adam, one of our good friends, came into the bar, and um, he had a, a lovely American staying room at the hotel, and he said, "Adam, what's the most expensive?" dram in your friend's bar mean you're having one it was mccallum 25 and adam was like look you don't need to do that mm-hmm. like it's you're paying for the name it's you know that if you really want something nice that single class climb leash is what to go for so there's two drams left in the bottle mm-hmm. poured them two drams put it down and the guy went ah cheers bang knocked it back and this is like a 30 pound dram mm-hmm. knocked it back and adam was kind of standing there in shock and he went, that was lovely. <laughs> Took Adam's dram, knocked his one back. <laughs> and Adam was standing there like, oh my God. And then he was like, we'll have two more. And then we had to explain to him that it was single cask. Mm. We had one bottle. You'll never see that, that again. again. Yeah. That's not how this works. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, oh. <laughs> like, oh. Oh my no. God. <laughs> no. Madness. Mm. Well, lovely donut. I like lovely I donut. like that pairing. I was wasn't you know sure how this would go down actually, but I'm quite enjoying that. I love mm. ginger though. I'm ginger mad. Mm. Ginger and everything. Mm. Yeah, really nice. Mm. What do you think of the whiskey? I like it. Mm. I do like it. I feel like I keep saying this is my favorite, but then I feel like this might be my favorite. <laughs> I think it's got it's got the most mouth feel. Yeah, definitely the most mouth feel. Mouthfeel. Like ramping up in flavour I think there. and lingering as well and I think when you've eaten a bit of the donut and some of that whiskey it kind of feels like afterwards you're really getting both mm. yeah, 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 yeah yeah which is quite yep, nice yep, yep. I quite like tasting both actually which is cool yeah I know what you mean the lighter ones you kind of you taste it and then it cuts through whereas that's the ginger still it's kind of light, fighting yeah, yeah, about. yeah it's good. Got you. ginger rocks um, this is awesome like ever <laughs> read it out I can't read it <laughs> so James's comment says my lovely Irish wife has just pointed out you need to turn your last donut 180 degrees as it looks like the Ivory Coast does like uh, I, fr- I forget oh. this is mirrored <laughs> right da, da, da. <laughs> there we go thanks for that <laughs> brilliant um, so yeah, lovely pairing that, I think, so. Yeah, I like that, it's good, yeah, that's still mm-hmm. the pairing, mm-hmm. it's interesting to see what people are saying. Um, but no, I like that, mm-hmm. I like that pa- That might be my favourite pairing, personally, so far. I think. I like this whiskey, yeah. this has uh, been the whiskey, I mean, yeah, I think Klein Leash is Klein Leash. Mm-hmm. Um, and cast, well, it's not cast strength, but strong Klein Leash at that price doesn't come around very, very often, often, so. Yeah, yeah, worth yeah. picking up a bottle, Yeah, for sure. I think. It's a website called malts.com, um, which is basically Diageo's um, website. Um, I think they have them all on sale just now, and I think this is something ridiculous, like 34, 35 pounds, which, you know, 
it's not an age statement, but it's it's good strength and it's Klein Leash is a good good distillery. So um, yeah, get get your hands on some if you can if you like it. I mean, I I, I love it, but mm -hmm. it's just I think a dram of that goes so far. Mm -hmm. Whereas like Green Spot's lovely, but you you be halfway through a bottle before you know it whereas mm -hmm. one of those and you're kind of it lasts, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah for yeah. sure for sure no oh, i like it hmm. oh i like it happy wife happy life <laughs> happy to help james <laughs> oh, cheers thanks to you <laughs> and uh best yet great thanks is that you in thank you Ewan. nice nice your folks are in this tonight aren't they they are my dad is in it yep so hello Ewan. hello folks um <laughs> so yeah i think we're going to tram number no i I think before we go into number five, right. you're going to have to give us this Irish accent. No, no. It's, no this no. is the Irish flag, mm -hmm. and you're wearing the... You made it an Ivory Coast flag. I'll, I'll do an Irish accent if you do an Ivory Coast accent. No. See? Ah. Have, but that's, <laughs> not, that's not fair. It's easier to do an Irish accent. Come on. Come uh, on. Right, give, I'll, it'll come. It'll I come. like Guinness down there. It'll come. Come on. Help me chant more. <laughs> right. Ram number five. <laughs> <laughs> Connemara from I don't know that's, that's, that's it that's what you're getting <laughs> oh, uh, right. I actually just heard Alan in you there I think I know, must have been yeah. thinking of Alan it wasn't bad actually no, it was actually alright couldn't that. even I'll work <laughs> so back to Irish stuff for dram number five <laughs> serious hat on talk about whiskey um, so we are on to Connemara. So um when I was picking the sort of Irish lineup, oh wrong way. Um I kind of wanted to show that Irish whiskey is also really diverse. So you know, triple distilled, pot still, Jameson's smooth, easy drinking, mixing whiskey is kind of what people think of Irish whiskey. Um and that's fine, the majority of it is probably that but there are distilleries out there who are challenging that waterford are a good example green spot or spot whiskey is the real classic stuff but you know the difference between green spot waterford and this is pretty similar to the scottish kind of variety of whiskey um i don't think it's to the same extent but there is variety there so connemara is peated irish whiskey um yeah peated um i do have a little kind of breakdown of the history of this um so it's named after a county uh, in Galway, um, named from, I'm going to read this because I left the most confusing Here story till the end, which was not, I could kind of know, it makes sense to the other ones, but this one was going to be the hardest one. So yeah. Connemara is an Irish single malt whiskey named after the cultural region in County Galway, which in turn takes its name from the Connemac Mara, an early tribe that settled in the area. The region... Uh, retains a strong association with traditional Irish culture today and makes up a large portion of the largest Gaeltach in the country, the name given to the region where Irish Gaelic remains the primary language. Um, the only whiskey brand in Ireland to produce from peated barley. Um, despite the name, there's no distillery in the Connemara region. Instead, the whiskey is produced at Cooley Distillery in County Lou. Um, it's gone through a bit of ownership. I won't bore you with all that, but effectively, um was taken over by the guys who now own Teelings um, and is now owned by Beam uh, Suntory. So Beam are Japanese um, and they own Bowmore, Ocantoshan, Freud, um, so have a very diverse portfolio of whiskey. But this is peated Irish whiskey. So yeah, let's mm. give it a try. Absolutely. And to match this and to kind of hold its own with peat, it's one that we've done before, but it just works really well with peated whiskey, is it's a espresso coffee ganache. Um, so it should be quite rich um, and quite chocolatey, but it should hold its own with this. But just had to be mindful of this there. It's peated, but it's not like a Scottish peat. It's not like Scottish peat. No. No. no it's not. No. Um, it's not as big and mighty. Peat's my thing. So yeah. when I started working here with Matt at the bar, I was very much a sort of an Isla snob, really, wasn't I? I didn't really. A bit, yeah. Yeah. I, I just didn't think there was anything in Highland or Speyside whiskey at all. And then, um, but obviously we had to keep trying things so I could talk about it. And um, and yeah, I grew to love, I've got some big favourites now and I just with Highland and Speyside, it's amazing. But mm. Pete is where my heart lies for sure. So it reminds me, it reminds me of, um, 
What? I don't want you around a pizza seat. <laughs> um, it reminds me of Highland Park. Um, mm. It's got that soft, heathery, floral peat. Um, it doesn't have that iodine campfire mm. smoke of Beaumont, Lafroy, mm. Ardbeg. Mm -hmm. It's got a much gentler, citrusy kind of peat going on there. Um, so yeah, Highland Park esque for me. That yeah. What are people thinking about it? Mm. Delicious peat. Um, tastes like my grandma's allotment. Yeah, in Castle mm. very great. Um, special yeah, protein very nice. Nice. The donut was sublime. Thank nice. you. Is that Tobias? Thank you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, coffee and smoke. Mm -hmm. We go on about it all the time. But I know, but it is a good combination, eh? It's like a, we always say, a slightly healthier version of a, an espresso Spreading. in a bag. Yeah. <laughs> espresso in a bag. Yeah. I like that whiskey, though. I sounded very excited there when I said that. Mm. <laughs> no, I am, though. It's nice. It's good. Yeah, it is really tasty. It's, um, again, I think it's like one of those ones where people say, I don't like peated whiskey. If you put that in front of them, I think you could like bridge them into it. Mm -hmm. I think people are always too keen to just chuckle a frog at someone mm -hmm. and say, oh, look, try this, look how crazy it is. Yeah, yeah. That's not the way to do it. I think, you know, something like that. Uh, there's like an entry to everything, isn't there? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I quite like this. So there's this is non-age statement. Non-age statement, 40%. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, really affordable price point. Again, I think you're looking about the 35 to 40 uh, mark. Um, yeah, affordable. Again, Irish whiskey, um, but kind of one of the classics. So, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed the Irish whiskey. Um, mm. I didn't want to do a full lineup because I didn't want to use Jamesons and all these this sort of stuff. I wanted to try and do some curveballs, but then kind of put your palate back into Scotch as a leveler mm -hmm. and then see how how it compares. Compares, so, yeah. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the the lineup. Mm. Um, the donuts so have been a, great. So thank you, thank you. It's yeah. always a good time as well to like mix and match your donuts. If you think that one of the donuts will match one of the other whiskies better, then go ahead and, and try that and then let us know what you think. If you've come up with anything mm. genius for us or anything that absolutely doesn't work. Mm. Um, and then also let us know your favourites and your least favourites in terms of pairings and the whiskies. Um, it's always good to hear what people like and, and dislike and for sure. Duncan's asking, was that made with Dear Green coffee? Oh, yes, it was. Of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Green is a coffee roasters down in Glasgow. They're based in Glasgow, and that's where what, all the coffee that we use in Perk. Um, so and how, it's incredible. They're how do you make the coffee filling? Ganache. Ganache, Ganache. Ganache yeah. Ganache. Um, well, we get a couple, few shots of espresso mm -hmm. out of the coffee machine, and we chill it right down. And then we warm cream, mix that with the coffee, and mix it with butter and a tiny touch of honey and healthy then, really healthy oh yeah, yeah. butter honey mm -hmm. cream all the good all the good stuff you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then and then you mix it all with chocolate once the cream's warmed a wee bit and the butter's melted you mix it in with chocolate let it all melt up together really helping the lockdown belly mm -hmm. this one yep. brilliant yeah and then you refrigerate it until it's chilled mm -hmm. enough to to pipe that yeah People have asked me before, like, oh, what's the average calorie in a donut? And I'm like, well, you're really asking the wrong question. Mm. <laughs> I mean, how much happiness do you get? Yeah. Mm. It's, it's something we don't associate ourselves with. <laughs> we don't need to know. <laughs> don't need to know. No. Um, but, you know, ganache is one of those ones. It's just, it's such a creamy texture. Mm. Mixed in with that coffee as well. Nice little mm. like, nighttime hit, though, isn't it? It's lovely. Lovely way to finish. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think we're kind of coming up for almost eight o'clock. So mm. um, thank you as always, guys, for for tuning in. Um, thanks for supporting the event. It's really keeping um, me and you going. Actually, mm. it's, it's it's really gives us something to focus on and structure. Um, it's really nice for us as well to kind of you know you're working away and doing bits and pieces, but it gets us to touch base with you guys, even though we're not necessarily seeing you all the time. Mm. Um, although I'm obviously seeing them more than you because Perk, we are mm. open Wednesday to do yep. Sunday at the moment. So um what time 10 till 10 to 3, 10 to 3. yep 10 mm. to 3 um we're open so um yeah we get to see a few folk but it's nice mm. to do this and, and kind of bring the two loves together 
Yeah, really good. Hmm. Will you carry uh, on doing these when lockdown is over? Please, uh, for us parents, this uh, they can get out in it. Yeah, so, oh, do you know, that's yeah, a great James, point, definitely, actually. yeah. yeah really so good we, point. We've kind of chatted about it, and um, the, the malt room is, is very small. Perth is very small. Mm -hmm. um, so when we host tastings, it's maybe for 15, 20 people. And with distancing, our venues aren't really set up Fit for, for, that. for, for yeah. doing, you know, these sort of events. So... Um, yeah, we will keep it going. Um, we're trying to do about one a month. Um, I think for us, that's that's great. And mm -hmm. hopefully for you guys, that feels like the right amount of time. I don't mm -hmm. think doing it every two weeks is, is good. And I think doing it every two, three months might lose the kind of excitement and looking forward to it. Like mm -hmm. we put it in the calendar and, you know, you start the week and there's quite a bit of prep in terms of you making yeah. donuts. There's us getting the whiskey and the bottles and and we post as well. Post so we're posting out. So it's, it's, a, it's kind of like a week operation. Um, but for the hour that we do, this is the favorite part of it for us. Like this last, this hour is, we have the same enjoyment as you guys do. Um, yeah. it, it's really good fun. So um, yeah, definitely will keep it going. Um, speaking of, I think the, yeah, the next, one. next one, we were just chatting about that just before. Um, we try and do them on like themes and stuff, which I think is quite good fun. Um, so I think we're looking to do an Easter one. Um, you'll have the Easter bunny outfit probably ready for me, will you? Yeah, I'll definitely work on yeah, something. Yeah, yeah no yeah, doubt. We'll Throw me under the bus thing. again. <laughs> um, so I think Easter is the Sunday's the fourth. Yeah. Um, so I think you're going to be pretty flat out with donuts. So with we don't want to. Yeah. We don't want to do it that weekend and it's also quite close to this weekend we try and leave maybe three four weeks between it for everyone so um i think we chose the ninth, ninth yeah friday, friday the, the ninth. ninth so um after this event um like always you guys who have tickets for this one will get first dibs on tickets for the, the next, next event one. so um once we log off here we'll make them live so if you guys want to want to do the easter one please please sign up and you guys as you get get first refusal so um, and if you guys have yeah. any ideas as to what I can do to dress him up in this next one, then uh, just let me know. Yeah, this is not <laughs> the, email, uh, this is not becoming a thing. You can all get involved. That'd be loads of fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is not um, becoming a thing. <laughs> no, we, think, we, um, we'd love questions and stuff. So if anyone has any questions about any of the donuts or any of the whiskeys yeah. or bottles or anything, please give us a shout. Um, um, yeah, we'll be happy to to answer yep. and, and, and whatnot. Nice, Susie, amazing first timers. Really oh. enjoyed it, great. Well, amazing. welcome to, to Whiskey and Donuts, Susie. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So yeah, um, yeah I think we'll probably call it a night there. Um, yeah. Enjoy, um, what about uh, Diwali with Indian whiskey? Yes, good idea. That is very good yep, idea. Yeah, there is lots of good Indian whiskey out there and loads, I probably need about two hours to talk to you about the interesting, interesting stories I think that are interesting about Indian whiskey. So, and there's lots of good outfit um, choices for that one. And Indian well. flavored donuts. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, when is Diwali? I actually don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But that's a great idea. Mm, Indian yeah, spices. That's a real challenge. You do yep. like a chai. Yeah. Oh. oh. John, there's oh. Yeah, loads of really. Yeah. That's, that's a great that's idea. Great, yeah. I'll have to look into that. Perfect. Cool. Okay. I think we, you guys have got good ideas. Drop us an email with them. Um, yeah. Easter will be live when we close here. Um, and yeah, Diwali sounds good fun too. So let's, yeah, we'll look, we'll let's look, look into, into that it. Sure, yeah. yeah. And we'll see you guys at the next one. So, Thank you so much for joining yep, us. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's <laughs> <laughs> You can't take it seriously for that. Apple. I know. <laughs> <laughs> good night guys. Cheers. Hmm. <laughs>